Day two of jury deliberations in the Harvey Weinstein case and still no verdict. The disgraced movie mogul is facing multiple felony counts, including rape and sexual assault. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has been covering the trial and joins us with more. Stephanie, we saw more notes coming from the jury today. What are some of the questions they're asking? Diane, the jury has plenty of questions. As you mentioned, this is the second day of deliberation for the jury. And in total, the jury has sent four notes to the judge uh, requesting different items, asking different questions. Today, they sent two notes to the judge. And uh, in that note, they requested to rehear testimony from Harvey Weinstein's main accuser, Mimi Halle. She's a former production assistant. So they requested to rehear her testimony where she laid out both of her sexual assault allegations. They also said they wanted to see any emails written about Halle by Weinstein, and they also wanted a detailed explanation of the two charges involving her allegations. So, Diane, all of this tells us that basically the jury not only has a lot of questions about the charges and how to understand that complicated verdict sheet, but they also have a lot of questions about the accuser's testimony. And Stephanie, I know they also asked for a readback of testimony from actress Rosie Perez. What's the focus there? So that request was in the fourth note, and they asked they asked for a, a, a lot of different uh, materials. But uh, they did request to hear rehear Rosie Perez's testimony. She claimed while she was on the stand that uh, Sopranos actress Annabella Sciorra, one of Weinstein's accusers, confessed to her about the alleged rape back in her New York apartment in 1993. Now her case is too old to prosecute, but her testimony still carries a lot of weight. Now the jury also asked for copies of all digital written communication between Weinstein and Paul Fesher, a former friend of Shiora, who says Shiora told him she, quote, fooled around with Weinstein, but he says she never mentioned the alleged rape. Now, the jury also wanted to see the forensic psychologist's PowerPoint presentation and all written communication mentioning Shiora in the private investigation firm Weinstein considered hiring to keep track of women accusing him of sexual misconduct. And just as a reminder, Weinstein faces five uh, felony counts, two counts of predatory sexual assault, criminal sexual assault, and two counts of rape. Uh, many of these charges could send Weinstein to jail for the rest of his life. And so many people want to know what is going on in the minds of those jurors right now. Stephanie, thanks so much for tracking it all for us. And now let's get some legal analysis to help us break it all down. Aida Lyson Ring is a partner at Barkett Emstein. And Aida, I know you're very familiar with the New York City courts where Weinstein is being tried. What do you make of these notes from the jury? Well, the jury is doing their homework. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and this has been a long case. It's been a complicated case. Mm -hmm. It's a gray area about our understanding of the morphing definition of what consent actually is. However, don't think that every single juror is actually asking the questions on those notes. One note could really be from one individual juror, but because the four person is the only designated individual mm -hmm. to actually write down the note and give it to the court, we just don't know which way they're thinking. Okay, and I know that this is really difficult to do, but we're not very patient. So, is there any way to sort of tell how long a jury might take with a case like this? In a case like this, you'd expect a couple of days at the minimum, but I wouldn't have been surprised if they had a verdict uh, today mm. um, or not till next week. I mean, we've seen juries deliberate sometimes for 10 days, which is excessive, but it happens. What stands out to you about this case? What stands out to me about this case is kind of the blurred lines between conduct that would be um, something that you would litigate in civil court, like mm -hmm. sexual harassment, and conduct that actually qualifies as rape. So I think lay people look at this case and say, well, what he's alleged to have done is really bad. And sure, that may be true, but you have to look at the elements of the offense. And rape in the first degree carries with it 25 years in jail. So you can't just sort of say it's pretty much that. They have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt each and every particular element of that offense. All right. I know it's going to be a difficult one, and it's a nail biter, and everyone's waiting to yes. see. Ida Lyson Ring, we appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.